Uh, today, I'd like to talk three topics. Uh, first, a new technique in which we dive into water. Uh, second, a new amazing technology of uh, safeguard for ER. And finally, a new change for deeper and deeper. Let me start with talking about the dive into water. Uh, this is an early prototype gastro camera uh, developed in 1950. Uh, this camera did not have an air insufflation system and it was required to insert uh, the nasogastric tube uh, to insufflate the air manually for observation of GM mucosa. So from the beginning of the uh, endoscopy history, an air insufflation system has been required. And we have performed colonoscopy under the gas uh, that used to be um, room air and now uh, CO2 uh, insufflation. And nowadays, endoscopy dive into water, namely underwater procedures, are uh, getting a lot of attention. Uh, it is reported that the water immersion or water exchange technique, uh, both uh, and the water insertion technique, can increase uh, sickle intubation rate and uh, decrease patient discomfort. And currently, we think underwater EMR will be the uh, standard procedure in the near future. Underwater EMR was originally reported by Dr. Kenneth Spimler from the United States. Uh, the report showed no early complications, including perforation without any submucosa injection. Uh, when we perform conventional EMR under the gas, uh, usually CO2, uh, submucosa injection was required. But submucosa injection is often make a fat protrusion. Then snarling is sometimes difficult and resulted in a piecemeal rejection. Uh, on the other hand, under the water, the chronic wall is collapsed and the region seems floating, uh, seems like floating in the water. And then it is easy to snare the region. Here, let me show you the movie of my underwater evil. Uh, you can see about 25 mm size protruding polyp in the sigma column. Uh, when I perform underwater EMR, I prefer to uh, observe it with um, narrow band imaging uh, because it shows polyp boundary more clear. After enough insufflation of water, I smell the lesion without any submucosa injection. As you can see, polyp looks rotty under the water. And it is easy to smear the polyp, including the surrounding normal mucosa. It is generally said the risk of perforation of underwater EMR is quite low, even though it is, uh, is done without any submucosa injection. I usually step forced coagulation twice shortly and then remove the lead using and cut them off. After removal of the polyp, we carefully observe the surrounding mucosa of the detected site and confirm no polyp residue using magnifying endoscopy. Uh, we conducted a multi center randomized control trial to compare the uh, conventional EMR and the you know, underwater EMR for the lesions uh, 10 to 20 mm size lesion. Uh, we enrolled 20, 200 lesions and allocated them to a conventional EMR and underwater EMR. Uh, main outcome measurement, um, you know, our zero rejection rate uh, in underwater EMR was significantly higher than that in the conventional EMR. So we can say that underwater EMR can be a standard procedure for removal of 10 to 20 mm size corrector for it for better complete removal. Next, uh, let me talk about the uh, new uh, endoscopy technology of safeguard for ER. As you know, we have many image enhanced endoscopy for diagnostic endoscopy, such as autopressors image, AFI, indigo carmine, narrowband imaging, and pressure violet. However, we have used um, only white light imaging during the therapeutic procedure from the beginning of the therapeutic endoscopy. Uh, this year, Olympus has launched a new endoscopy system that is X1. In the X1, uh, a new image endoscopy, enhanced endoscopy that is LDI, let dichromatic imaging, uh, is equipped. 
uh, Aldia uses three types of glides uh, with different characteristic, characteristics of lead, amber, and green. Uh, lead light can penetrate uh, into the deeper layer, but it is difficult to show uh, the blood vessels due to weak absorption uh, by the hemoglobin. Uh, on the contrary, amber light can highlight the, the blood vessel in deep layer, deep layer, and green lights can show superficial blood vessels. Uh, this new technology, RDI, can increase the visibility of uh, bleeding sources uh, as well as blood vessels, and it leads uh, hemostasis, hemostasis quicker and easier, also reducing the stress of the physician during endoscopy therapy. Uh, let me show you the movie uh, of hemostasis during uh, mucosa incision of gastric ESD. Uh, here you can see um, bleeding from the inside the mucosa. Uh, first, we tried to coagulate it blindly since we could not identify the bleeding spot uh, directly with white light image. But actually, we could not achieve uh, hemostasis with hemostatic forceps. So uh, we changed the observation mode to RDI. Then the fresh, fresh blood uh, that has just been bled uh, can appear uh, orange, and other diluted blood can appear clear. I heard this is caused by different concentration of hemoglobin. So when you look at uh, closely there, uh, carefully, uh, you can detect a uh, bleeding spot uh, more detail. Then a uh, hemostasis, hemostatic procedure uh, can be done uh, more precisely. And finally, uh, we can achieve uh, hemostasis. Another effect of RDI is clear visualization of endoscopic image uh, during ESD. It is often difficult to obtain a clear image due to contamination during the ESD. Uh, however, when we change to the RDI mode, the image seems clear without contamination and um, the demarcation. Between white muscle layer and loose and semi layer of real. Here's a muscle layer, here's semi So we can recognize the appropriate uh, dissection plane precisely. And it makes semi dissection efficient and safe. Additionally, a uh, blood vessel uh, can be recognized before cutting the blood vessel. Here you can see uh, artery and vein. As you can see, uh, we do not injure uh, big blood vessels and coagulate the blood vessel uh, using most of the forceps, forceps before cutting. So uh, RDI can uh, realize a very safe uh, ESD procedure without massive bleeding. And finally, therapeutic endoscopy is uh, going to deeper and deeper. As you know, um, Endoscopy resection is limited above muscular proprio since if we cut muscular proprio, we will have a perforation. But now the cutting line becomes deeper and deeper uh, to realize, you know, endoscopic exclusiveness resection that is EFDR. Two general approaches to EFDR have been described: uh, non-exposed and exposed. Uh, in non-exposed EFDR, the power wall uh, segment uh, containing the region is invaginated 
uh, into toward, toward the lumen uh, to allow a secure cell cell to cell position uh, before full thickness resection. In effect, uh, the closure is achieved before the resection is disappeared and uh, just the tongue non exposed. Uh, in exposed uh, FDL, the full thickness resection is undertaken first with subsequent uh, closure of the defect. Uh, the temporary exposure of the uh, peritoneal cavity uh, to the intestinal lumen with this approach is the basis for the term exposed. Uh, here, let me show you the over the scope device for non exposed EFDL. Uh, suction or attraction of the lesion uh, into the cap and subsequent pre uh, firing creates uh, wall duplication and isolation of the lesion permitting the subsequent sneer resection above the knee. Uh, exposed EFTL can be further classified to tunneled and non-tunneled techniques. Uh, with sub, uh, submucosal uh, tunnel endoscopic uh, resection, that is star, uh, the tunnel is used to gain access to the, the subepithelial uh, neoplasm, which is uh, then inoculated and then removed via the tunnel. Endoscopic clips and endoscopic procedure uh, are typically used to close the mucosa defect after submucosa tunnel endoscopy. A mycenae colleague, Nolia Wedo, has performed non tunnel exposed EFTR for gastric e disc and uh, reported uh, case studies. Okay, let me show you his procedure. As you can see, Swiss CM uh, sized uh, submucosa tumor was located at the anterior wall of the upper gastric body. A non tunnel exposed EFTL technique uses a similar approach to ESD, which involved the fluid expansion of some mucosal layer and bisection uh, in the some mucosal plane to achieve unblocked resection. Uh, during non tunnel exposed EFTL, the dissection is then continued through the muscular scrupulia uh, circumferentially around the region. After muscular layer incision, uh, the lesion can be floppy and a bit difficult to cut. Attraction method is effective in this phase, and IT knife is much better to cut muscular layer uh, than the needle type knife. After total removal of the tumor, he closed the, the defect with a loop and clip uh, closure technique using a double channel endoscope. The loop is opened around the full thickness effect uh, and the uh, endoscopic clips advanced uh, through the other channel are uh, applied uh, over the loop at several locations and the loop is then closed to approximate the edges of the defect. Uh, so and now a prospective study to show its safety and efficacy is ongoing and we are expecting this procedure to be covered by public insurance in the future. So let me summarize my presentation. Uh, these days, we prefer to uh, dive into water. That means uh, we think underwater endoscopy can be a future study procedure. And now we have a safeguard for ER, that is uh, RDI, which uh, makes vessels and uh, bleeding points more clearly. And finally, uh, endoscopic full thickness resection is almost becoming a practical procedure. Those are what I wanted to tell you today. So uh, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much.